Welcome to Yoga Surf Asana, second session, Aaron. Let's begin in a forward fold position. We're gonna start by getting our legs nice and straight, so just walking our hips back nice and slowly. And as we do this, we wanna curl the toes. And the reason why we wanna curl the toes is because we wanna get those legs straight. Now, you might not be able to touch your toes at first, so we're gonna start by sliding the hands left and right over the ankles, just moving our way left and right over those ankles and just reaching for the feet. So maybe you can grab the feet, maybe you can't, but regardless, we wanna reach the outsides of those feet, reach the outsides of those feet and try and get those legs straight by moving one hip back at a time. And as we do this, just slowly, slowly feeling that stretch all the way through the body incorporating all those micro movements we learned yesterday together and being able just to feel ourselves dropping down in a good way, slowly, slowly, letting those hamstrings relax, letting that lower body relax. And then finally, the upper body relaxes because the head starts to drop down. Beautiful. As we start to move in this way, you can grab hold of the outside of the feet or the top of the feet, whichever you prefer. If you can't grab hold of that, just grab hold of the ankles. And whatever we're gonna do now, we're just gonna start to bend our knees, just like this, just little movements, holding on to that point. That way it becomes a progressive practice. So every day or every other day, you work on your hamstrings through your asana, right? You wanna get a good firm idea of where you're at. And then through the stretch, how much further we're actually gonna go. All right, so once here, first thing we wanna do is get our legs straight now. So get into a comfortable position. And remember, we are gonna be holding three to five minutes. And then from here, we're gonna bend the elbows, bend the elbows, bend the elbows, bend the elbows. And the elbows is a micro movement. So now you can close your eyes, go inside, because we're looking for our level of comfort. There's a level of comfort that the forward fold will bring. And that level of comfort comes through self-exploration of the micro-movement, right? So forward and back, forward and back, using the elbows to help bring you in a little bit deeper into the sense of comfort and sensation that we're really looking for here. And of course, that strong sensation is going to bounce back just like an elastic. We move it in one direction, right? That feeling starts to move us, the emotion of motion, so feeling that, breathing through that. Because again, through riding, things become contracted because muscles become highly specialized. And the beauty is, is if we can get all that contraction underneath our voluntary control. Of course, this is ambitious, but that's what awareness is. Trying to draw that awareness into the body, now explicitly through the breath, level two. Inhaling through the nose, Exhaling behind closed mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhaling behind closed mouth. And let your head really dangle. Your head is like a low hanging fruit. Your head is getting riper and riper with each breath. And so the head is getting heavier and heavier. And as the head gets heavier and heavier, so too the stretch becomes stronger and stronger. As the head is like a 30 pound bowling ball, right? The head has a lot of structural complexity as does the chest, as does the hips. And as we go down deeper and deeper and deeper, we're starting to find that breath all the way in and all the way out. And when you can relax the head, relax the shoulders, relax the body, relax everything in a comfortable way. Start to seek that third level from comfort to comfortable edge through the breath. And then finally into yin, into relaxation. And this is where we do nothing, right? That whole notion of being, you know, when we're doing nothing, we're being, and that's a really important concept. So breathing all the way in, breathing all the way out behind closed mouth, feeling that slight hiss, that sound, right? Of tempering our spine because it's our spine that takes the signal up to the brain. No spine, no sensation. 
There is no sensation in your legs. It's just a signal, a transduction that gets interpreted by your brain. As you hold the posture, that signal to noise ratio starts to increase. Your awareness is the signal. You're focusing on leg straight and then relaxing that head as much as you can so you can dangle that whole spine forward. You're holding on to an arbitrary point, whether it's your ankles, sides of the feet or tops of the toes, and that can change, grip can change. But the point is, can you be here? Can you stay here? Can you endure with gratitude and grace for your own body? Because all that strong sensation you're feeling is feeling that it's coming out, feeling that it's moving through, feeling that it has somewhere to go. And where it has to go is out. It doesn't matter what direction out is, up, down, left, right, side to side, out is out and in is in. So we're exploring the inner mountain within, we're traversing the inner landscapes of ourselves. And at the same time, we're releasing or letting go of all that doesn't serve us. And in many ways, that's what strong sensation is here to tell us, where that tension lies. And then what we can do through awareness by bringing voluntary control of the involuntary system. Good, one more minute, strong breathing. Feel that relaxation coming to you. Rather than seek it out, let it come to you. Let yourself become so still, so spacious, so silent, that again, the experience comes to you. Because again, we're experiencing our being. Nothing to see, but be. Breathing all the way in, and all the way out. Good, 10 more breaths. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Three, two, and last one, we're gonna sigh it out with the sound of a. Uh, uh, so important to sing that mantra. Beautiful, slowly coming up. Bring your arms behind you, soles of the feet to the floor. Best part, start to move those knees side to side. And as you move those knees side to side, go as slow in order to feel that flow as we're drawing that energy up from the hips again into the heart, right? That's the critical part. Up through the hips and in through the heart. That's the critical part. Deep breath in, deeper breath out. Let it flow. Let it go. And so this increases immune system functioning as well because, right, the more that we breathe, the more that we receive. We're oxygenating all the cells. And as it's been said in yoga anatomy or yoga science, that disease, dis-ease, cannot live in oxygen-rich environments. That's it, brother. Nice and slow. Feel that flow. Look in the opposite direction if that's what feels comfortable. If you can draw it all the way up to the head, through the heart, and through the hips. Perfect. Nice and easy now. 
We're gonna roll over onto the left side. So I'm gonna flip around just so we're facing the same direction, right? So I'm onto the left side now. My left knee is in front. And you can turn and face me if you wish. It's up to you. Okay, perfect. So left knee is in front, just like in pigeon pose. But we're gonna do a modified version of pigeon pose. And I like to call this one, you know, the Trinity, right? This one is where we move in this triumphant in three different directions over the hip. I think you're really gonna enjoy this. So the first direction is over the knee and that's the pigeon pose. So we're gonna come forward and back, forward and back. And as we do this, you're already starting to feel it in the spine. Beautiful. Now from here, walking those hands out to either side of the knee, again, same thing. I like to call it almost push, uh, pigeon push-ups. We're gonna go down and we're gonna push up. We're just gonna feel that a few times. Oh, feel our body, right? Spine can do whatever it wants. We're just moving it up and down nice and slowly. Up and down nice and slowly. And again, the more we flow, the more we can learn how to let go. Beautiful, when you're ready, drop all the way down onto your elbows, get nice and comfortable. And then when you're ready, find a nice head pillow for yourself with your hands and just settle over that knee. And of course, that was our minute to get comfortable. Now that we're comfortable, that's level one. Level two is comfortable edge. What does edge mean? Edge means breath. Find the breath. And you know you're riding your edge when you can still breathe, right? If you can't breathe, if breathing has become restricted or short, that's not your edge, that's beyond the edge. So we wanna always stay in the edge Right, as we start to open up our hips, open up our heart, open up our head. Because again, it's the longevity that matters. It's the quality, not the quantity. So again, we hold for a minimum of three minutes. And the reason that is, is because we need to engage in the connective tissue. The connective tissue will not engage or will not relax or will not let go unless enough heat has been applied. And so this heat, this internal heat that we're referring to is gravity, right? Is the stretch, ultimately is the posture. And that's why the breath is tempering the steel of the spine. It's forging its strength through flexibility. So deep breath in, deeper breath out behind closed mouth, And just feeling that energy. As you start to get into that hip, start to feel what that left hip is speaking, right? Breathing through the posture is in many ways a communication. A communication of respect for your body. A communication of respect for your healing. A communication of respect for yourself. And this is what we call self-love, right? Or self-care. And this is that practice. Good. One more minute here, just enjoying. Breathing in what the earth is breathing out. Starting to feel the belly button moving more towards the spine with each breath hollowing out your insides, motivating your organs, stimulating your systems. And we'll do 10 more breaths. All the way in, all the way out. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Four, 
three, two, and last one singing sigh. <sighs> Push it all the way out. And then with helping hands, bring yourself up and just feel before we transition, just feel how effective not just the hip is, but how the effect has taken place on your emotional state, right? Affect and effect are two different things. Yes, there's an effect, but we also want to study the affect, how that applies to our emotions. And the hips are known as the drunk drawers. And so we store a lot down in our hips. And so this sequence of movements, this sort of, we call deer pose and this is like the triangulation of deer pose, working all aspects of the hip is really gonna feel good. So the next aspect is gonna be over top. Hey, dude, Doug, welcome to your yoga class, dude, Doug. What is it about animals that they just love yoga time, eh? So bro, when you're ready, both hands, one hand in front of the knee, the other hand in front of your ankle. And so you see how my back's kind of in a weird position? It's a twist. So this is gonna feel really good, especially for all those toe side turns. Again, if you were regular, we're gonna walk. We're gonna walk those hands forward slowly, slowly. Oh, poor dude, dog. Oh yes, dude, dog. Nice and relaxed. Yoga break with Dude Doug. <laughs> Adorable. Let's just let's just get a little look on what's happening here. Dude Doug, Dude Doug. It's a Dude Doug break. Oh, sweetheart. Hi, dude. Need some loving? Yeah. Well, maybe that's it today, Aaron. Maybe that's as far as we go. Yeah, we'll keep going. Sure. Okay. Okay. Well, if you're in it to win it, let's see if we can do all three now that Dude Doug's had his love, love. Let's go hand to ankle, just as we are. You can sit up, good. And now walk that straight out in front. And this is what we call like super pigeon or pro pigeon, but here it's gonna feel really nice. Drop your elbows down, and now you're stretching. Bring your head down. Now you're stretching over top of the shin. And that's just gonna alter the angle ever so slightly. It's gonna feel a little weird because and that left side between the hip and the rib cage is really gonna get stretched here. And this is where you need to breathe because this is all that back foot. As you power through with your right foot, your goofy foot, that left leg that kicks out on the back side, this is that stretch. So that muscle in you is probably very hyperactive or hyper vigilant. So we want to help it to chill. And then again, by breathing, that's how we do it, right? By stillness, by spaciousness, that's how we do it. The silence starts to grow. And again, that strong sensation is the signal to noise ratio. That's the noise, the strong sensations, that noise. We want to get into the signal through our awareness and pinpoint just the good feelings, the good affect to our posturing. Deep breath in. Deeper breath out. And as you breathe all the way in, all the way out, remembering to expand that breath because the breath is where the healing energy comes in. 
right? It's one thing to do nothing and let the body heal. It's another thing to actively engage in that process. And as we actively engage in the process of healing, we start to feel the healing, right? We get that feeling of healing, breath by breath, moment by moment. As every movement we've ever done approaches or enters this moment. So 10 more breaths. Nice and deep. At six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one, let's sigh it out. <sighs> and again, with helping hands slowly coming up, and again, just moving around, feel that difference now. As we start to move that hip, you're now feeling that the hip is a ball and socket joint. Starting to feel the three-dimensional sort of aspect of what the hip is, how much rotation, how much flow, and again, how much resistance there is. Even I feel crick, crack, crick, crack, right? And that's that fascia sort of breaking itself up, all that strong connective tissue slowly dissolving, almost imagining it to going into the bloodstream and being circulated through your body, through your breath and through your movement. Fantastic. The triangle has three sides, so we have one more side to go, and that's now gonna be over the thigh. This is a twist. So those two movements in the hips are now gonna bring that hip energy all the way up to heart and head. So start with arms straight. The one hand is over the knee. The other hand is very comfortably over to the side of the hip. Don't twist too much. You start to move yourself side to side, arms straight side to side. And you can even stay here, just breathing here, feeling here. If you wish, you can also change your hands with your elbows and slowly start to come down. And of course, if you have the flexibility, you can come all the way down using your hands as a pillow and look over your left side. Again, that's very big and dramatic, so take your time. If it's too much, go back to elbows. And if that's too much, start with hand straight. They all work. It's just levels of depth, levels of yin, right? You're still gonna get wet if you jump in the water. How deep you go, well, that's, that now shows you different life, different energies, different spirits that abide within us and around us. And so the metaphor is to reach the place where you are most relaxed. And once you find that comfortable place, whether it's arms straight, elbows bent, all the way down and look around. Just start to breathe. And your body will start to naturally receive. <sighs> Breathing all the way in. And all the way out. With each breath, the body gets a little more comfortable as we learn to ride that comfortable edge, transitioning from one posture to the next in an optimal way. As we move from hips to heart all the way up through the head. That's how the Kundalini energy awakens. It rises from the base of the spine and it moves up towards the crown of the head. And when we breathe, we breathe nose to toes. So nothing is separate here. 
Everything is being enacted. Good. Ten more breaths. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. One singing side to clear the posture. <sighs> and awesome. With helping hands, let's come up slowly, slowly. You're going to feel it. Everyone feels 40 years older when we stretch like this. Doesn't matter the age. And now again, enjoy that feeling. Enjoy that massage. Natural chiropractor. Natural osteopathist. Take a full minute to explore just being here in the deer pose any way your body wants to move. Ultimately, you're receiving the signal from the hips to the spine and that noise is starting to dissipate. It's starting to dissolve. There's a clearer signal. There's a clear understanding of ourselves as we stretch like this, not just stretching the body, but stretching the mind. And that's where the teachings come in. Movement is medicine for the body. Stillness is medicine for the mind. So let's explore that stillness on the other side now. Let's see the difference between left and right side. And you'll notice quite a dramatic difference. So slowly bringing right foot in front, then the left. We're just going to shuffle over to the opposite side. So I bring the right knee in front, left knee behind me, and just placing that right foot on top of that left knee, just nice and easy, it holds its frame, and just starting to get that massage. And you notice a dramatic difference right away. You could really feel just how powerful what we did through those three quadrants, right? Through that triangulation of the hip, how were we able to relax all that tightness? Right now, the hip joint doesn't feel like it's in a ball and socket. But by the end of it, it surely will. So let's place the hands on either side of the knee, starting in that first position. Let's just do a few push and push-ups. So as we do the push and push-ups, just slowly, slowly bring ourselves up and down. Up and down. Just feeling the spine flow, undulating the spine. And when you're ready, the next level is replace your hands with your elbows. Just come down, move around. And if that's as far as you wanna go, great. That's a great feeling when we come down on the elbows. And then finally, if you wanna go even further, right? You always have that choice. Just set up a little pillow for yourself with your hands or directly on the floor and just relax down. Take all the time you need to get comfortable. Remember, breathing happens automatically. The type of breathing we're talking about in the yoga practice is a natural breath. And we get there through inducing pranayama. Pranayama, in this case, is long and deep. Right? It's long and peaceful. As we inhale through the nose, exhale behind closed mouth, And let that smoldering feeling, that lunar ujjayi, right? That reflective, but very strong breath start to temper that steel in the spine. Again, we want to have the strength of a spine sword. We want to feel that we can stand up for things. And in order to stand up for things, 
we first have to stand up for ourselves. In order to do that, it has to feel good to stand. We need a strong backbone. And so it's always been amazing to hear, you know, the expression, grow a backbone. Well, it's almost like an invitation to start yoga. Right? Because we are growing, in a sense, not a new backbone, but we're growing into what our backbone is capable of. And we all have that potential. Everybody can do yoga. Everybody. From surfers, skiers, right? All aspects of mountain recreation. Even in the summer, yoga for golfers. Because everybody who comes to these sports come to it with a body. Of course, no need for this type of stretching if you're in the VR world. Right? That's not real. Yoga is for reality. Yoga is for those who are actualizing their practice or passion. And so breathing all the way in, all the way out, you feel the strength of your spine just resting over top of the knee and the thigh, growing stronger with each and every breath, increasing circulation through respiration and increasing circulation through micro movements. Let's do 10 more deep breaths together. 10. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. body slowly coming up with helping hands again just massage it out feel that flow and let it go again just let it go try not to think again the mind is being affected by the body right now so don't try to gain control with mental abilities just stay in this little la la land Allow your body to speak to you. Let it direct you through the micro movements of where you need to go. Right? Just like we spoke on the last class, snow is the embodiment of everyone. But the snowflake is each of us and each of us are different. Each of us are unique. And so the asana just follows the pattern of the flake. What's within that snowflake is unique to all of us. Beautiful. Now from here, let's take those hands out in front once again, the shin. So one hand to the ankle, the other hand to the knee, and then walk out from the shin. That's it. And again, this is known as pro pigeon when we kick the leg back. This is where people go into more of a square pose. But this is a big hip and upper. So be careful. Start with the hips. Start with the elbows and work your way slowly towards the ground, no rush. Slowly towards the ground, being parallel with your shin. Take the first little bit of time to shake out your head, open up your jaw, again, always relaxing your jaw, because if there's tension in the jaw, there's involuntary tension in the body. The vagus nerve is that wandering nerve that sends that communication from our guts to our faces. We can feel it. We can feel that connection, that wandering connection through the body. Right? The sensations 
nose to toes, the sensations, crown of the head to the tailbone. All this is transduction as we take all of this noise and through awareness start to focus on the signal. Where is the strong sensation? Why is it arising? And how can we overcome it? Well, in our Yoga Sarvasana Yin variation, right, we explore it through the breath. The breath is that thing that is quieting, that is silencing, that is bringing space and awareness to the posture. And once comfortable, starting to breathe even deeper as we approach that comfortable edge, where we can just abide the posture through the breath, having that long, peaceful breathing that oxygenates the blood and becomes natural over time. Good, we'll do 10 more breaths here. singing side to clear the posture <sighs> good and as we etch a sketch our bodies and our minds let's slowly come up and again just move around just feel as that ball and socket joint starts to become more and more a reality it starts to soften as we lengthen and strengthen our bodies Moving the spine in all seven directions, forward and back, side to side, and twisting, all leading to elongation. So one more to go. This time, left hand over the knee, the right hand comes over top. We're gonna go into that twist. This is where we draw that energy from the hips all the way up to the heart and the head. And again, if you notice, just moving that body, micro movements forward and back by pushing heart forward, heart back. And then again, staying here if this feels good. And at any point, I'm just demonstrating, right, coming down on your elbows, right, you can take all the time you need. You've already done the first round. You know where we're heading. You know where we're going. So do it at your own pace. Again, because everybody is different. And asymmetrical, we are. So doing left and right doesn't always feel the same. And then finally, level three, right, or level C, right, coming down and twisting, looking over right shoulder. So again, breathing here, feeling here. Nice, deep stretch through the body, nose to toes, crown of the head to tailbone. The twist really brings that motion of emotion to the body. Just be aware of it. Breath by breath, all movement into this moment. Pushing that belly button back towards the spine.
and just feeling that connected consciousness from your intention through to the action. Remember, 90% up is showing up. You know, being live together holds us accountable to our practice. And this practice is a daily practice. Very important to realize that we can take slices from this practice and commit to them throughout the day. There's always a moment to take the proverbial smoke break and do that with stretching. Okay, we can do that by breathing, that stretches the mind, also stretches the body. We can do that by physically stretching, stretches the body, but it also too stretches the mind. Because again, what sensation is there to experience if not for the mind? The mind teaches, the mind tells. Good, 10 more breaths here. Nine. Eight, enduring all the strong sensations. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one, one singing side to clear. Uh, awesome, brother. And again, slowly coming up, allowing those hips to relax. Really enjoy a full minute just to explore left and right. Feel the difference. Again, your own natural chiropractor, your own natural massage therapist. With eyes closed, you're exercising the practice of pratyahara, turning the senses inward. Again, feeling the healing. Of course, that meaning for us has a double entendre because of course the heal side is of course the hardest to master. But again, no different than healing, right? Healing is the hardest to master. It's very easy to get sick. It's very easy to fall into patterns of dis-ease or discomfort. And so yoga is here to help us liberate that dissonance. And so we free ourselves of the dis-ease by freeing ourselves of the dissonance. So now it just becomes ease. And we free ourselves of the discomfort and now it just becomes comfort. Good. Taking that other leg just straight out in front in a cross-legged position. Perfect. Just take your hands straight out. Again, we are in a three posture sequence. So this is our last posture. Walking those hands out in front, just finding that square position with our hips, nice and easy, level one variation. And just coming forward, arms straight. And then again, finding your way towards your elbows if you can. Right, and if you can, you can stretch even more forward and relax your head like that low hanging fruit because your mind is getting riper and riper. And so the heavier the fruit is on the branch, the more the branch bends. Again, it seems so intuitive, seems so natural, but it takes a while to get into it. it takes a while to feel that natural movement, that natural energy. And I believe it's because the breath is not yet natural. Once the breath becomes long and peaceful, it becomes short and sweet because of all the rich oxygenation in the body. So breathing here, feeling here, finding that comfortable edge, Aaron. Really getting into it. It's a culmination of our forward fold, our deer pose, working on the triangulation of that pose on both sides. And now sort of synthesizing it all here 
in square pose. And then remembering where we go from here, right, is Shavasana. After this, we're going to integrate all this synthesis, all this collaboration into one final posture. Inhaling all the way, exhaling. And remember, moving forward as appropriate, if your body allows, but always knowing when you've reached the edge. The edge is when the breath becomes short, when you forget that you're breathing. There's no sweetness to it. It's just short. But if you can continue long, deep breathing, long, peaceful breathing, then short and sweet breath will be the natural breath. And so we've ultimately replaced, through the practice, automatic breathing, which is happening all the time to every body, with natural breathing, which occurs when we breathe in what the earth is breathing out. Ten more breaths. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Three, two, one. Let's do one singing side to clear. Deep breath in. Ah. That's the best part. Walking the hands up slowly, slowly. Take your time. Bring your hands behind you. Uncross your legs. Flip it around, this time the right. You might feel very spacey, just come forward, right? Take your time, all the time you need to come forward and just reverse those legs when you're ready and slowly find again the next part of this two-part posture. First with left leg, then with right leg. And again, right leg is usually a little easier because again, we usually sit with the right leg forward. But as you said earlier to me, right? Balancing it out. You know the importance of balancing it out. Even though we ride a directional board because that's optimal, the rider should do their best at balancing it out. Because then we just stack up that asymmetricalness in the body too much. It becomes too one way. Always good to change it up. Always good that the board can ride in both directions if needed, if built that way. And so here in yoga, we are trying to balance left and right side. Not perfectly, but harmoniously, right? We're trying to balance our masculine and feminine. Again, not perfectly, but harmoniously. We're always going to have some aspects of one more than the other. Some people may perform more active practice for their yoga sarvasana. That will come in time. For now, what's important is to release all that yang, all that strong energy from the body that has made us strong. Now we want to make it sweet want to make it elastic, want to make it flow. So whatever doesn't serve us can go. And only the good stuff remains. The stuff that we call ourselves. <sighs> Breathe. 
push that belly button back towards the spine. That'll help flatten the back as the forehead moves towards the ground. It right? doesn't have to touch the ground, just moving toward it. Ten more breaths. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Three, two, and one singing side to clear. Ah. Now I've been saying best part each time, but this truly is the best part. Let's lie down, bring all this energy from the hips, the heart and the head now let's ground it down, down, down onto the ground. Stretching out the legs, stretching out the arms, right? Five pointed star. And the reason why that is, is because we are born of starlight. Scientifically, the Big Bang asserts that it was a supernova star that began the universe. And this starlight has been traveling. It's what's expanding our universe through hydrogen and helium. So squeezing the glutes, releasing the glutes, feel the base of those atomic elements where we came from. We have that within us, right? So understanding that the periodic table of carbon lives in us and that carbon came from hydrogen and helium, it came from starlight. And so doing Shavasana, doing five pointed star here on the ground, we remember the starlight that we are. As we face the universe behind closed eyes, seeing past the stars, past the planets, past the solar system, past the galaxy, and into the very expansion itself. And one of the beautiful Gyan Yoga questions we can ask ourselves here in our Shavasana as we integrate is what are we expanding against? What is the universe expanding against? Of course, the easy answer is itself. But the deeper question is what you're experiencing as a feeling. What is your self expanding against? What is your self expanding toward? And as we breathe in and breathe out, we start to experience more mystery than matter because there is more mystery than matter. If we're only using 10% of our brains, Shavasana is a time that we use all 100%. Why? Because we're not doing anything to limit it. We're not doing anything that is putting a quantitative value. We're learning to value our values. We're learning to expand through quality, through consciousness, what it is to be and what it is to truly see. Let's do one singing side to relax a little further, deeper. Remember, if you're having any lower back pain, to just bring the soles of the feet onto the floor. And with a little micro movement, that lumbar spine can relax. Okay, just always remember that modification is always available. Everybody is different. So let's sigh it out together. Deep breath in. And exhale. Ah. And just holding that spaciousness, holding that stillness, 
and abiding in the silence within and around you. And of course, there's internal sounds like your heart beating. There's external sounds, perhaps like your refrigerator or maybe some light music. But it's all silence. It's all stillness. It's all spaciousness. Shavasana is the integration of it all as one in oneness. We're ride and rider. We're yogi and yoga become one. Take a deep breath in to supercharge the body and hold the breath. Holding the breath for 10, helping with our awakening. Nine, awake to our wakefulness. Eight, seven, expand the lungs, expand the abdomen. Six, five, four, three, two, exhale through the mouth, let it all go. Beautiful. Twinkling the fingers like stars, rolling out through the sides of the head. Remembering, this is the end of the practice, but realistically, it's the beginning of the experience. So you can always return back to Shavasana or where we're going to next to close our practice into sitting posture for meditation. Right? That's where the practice ends and the experience begins. Good. So if you don't want to come up, you don't have to, you can take it as adult nap time. But if you wish, come join me in a comfortable seated position. And just enjoy the final mantra, whether lying down or sitting, right? Just enjoy the final moments of our practice as we bring it to a close. It's my job as the teacher to close it. It's your job as the practitioner to continue in any which way whether that's lying down or sitting. Again, we're gonna revisit our moves from yesterday. Heart goes forward, heart goes back from our sitting position, just feeling how the practice has affected us. Writing, if we're being like water this whole time, we're learning how to anchor. We anchor at the beginning of practice, we anchor at the end of practice. That's why I like to begin with sitting and I like to end with sitting because it's in the sitting that I see the empiricism, the science of yoga in my own experience. And this is a collective subjective phenomenon because every body is different, but we all have a body. And so the body's effect can produce very similar results. Good, now left and right. So remembering as we go left, just slowly bringing that ear and elbow down. Again, no reason to touch the floor, just reaching. Ah, oh, crick, crack, crick, crack, right? Feel, feel, feel. Love, love, love. First yourself, then another, then all others. First yourself, then dude dog, then the entire yoga surf club community. Right? And that's our ability to share what is most beautiful in ourselves with others. Good, Aaron, let's start to twist now. Very gently, just close.
Close your eyes, find an invisible drishti, and just move your elbows left and right. Try and find the twist. It's hard at first to not move your head and let your body move around you while your head stays in a position trying to get that twist. So we're just bringing a subtle twist. And now when you're ready, look in the direction where you wanna go. So if the arm goes right, look right. If the arm goes left, look left. And then just let your head follow your gaze. Not opposite, but go in the direction of the momentum of the movement. Good, fantastic. And when you're ready, extend that out to your arms. Let your hands come together, create some friction. Let your spine chill out as we learn to clear and close our practice. Bring it up over your head, back down over your heart, and let's feel the heart space. Always important to get that evidence, that empiricism, that observation. And remembering if you feel nothing, it's great because you're still feeling no thing, right? That's a feeling. And if you feel something, great, for that something, is something. Either way, we are remembering how to feel. Whether it's nothing or something, it's still a feeling. And that's really important for our psyche, for our soul, for our spirit. And when I call it psyche, soul, spirit, that's just the integration of mind, body, and breath as one. Good, let's clear and let's close our practice by doing that strong bromery. That strong bromery is just the ohm with our mouth closed. And we're gonna feel it through every cell as we bring our hands together in Namaskar Mudra prayer position. Deep breath in. Mm. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace in your heart, in your life, and everything that you see, are, and be. The divine in me sees and shares the divine in you, my friend, in love, with love, through love. Thank you so much for honoring and keeping this daily practice between us. Namaste. Yeah.